Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a quarantine Q&A for you guys. I have snuck away from my children. They're currently downstairs with Matt. So I thought I would film this video for you. So I put out a question on Instagram asking if you had any questions and I've had so many through that I think I'm gonna try and keep my answers nice and short just to get through as many questions as I possibly can. But I hope you really like this and if you have any other questions, please put them in the comments down below. I always make a huge effort to answer as many like comments as I can, especially in the first one to two hours of a video going live. I tend to sit there answering your comments. So that's a really good tip if you ever actually wanna get me. I'm there like within the first two hours. And of course, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at Mrs. Emily Norris. Please follow me and then you can take part in things like this in the future. But for the first question, I thought this one was actually a really nice one. It said, what has social distancing and being in quarantine taught you? And we were talking about this just yesterday. We have learned so much from this experience. I think the main takeaway for me is that we don't have to be so busy. Our lives are at like 100 miles an hour. The kids have a million clubs and commitments to go to. We're always popping somewhere. We would always wake up on a Saturday and think, what are we gonna do today to entertain them? Like take them to a trampoline park or take them you know, to this or that. And actually, it's been really nice to stay in, play board games, just enjoy each other's company. So I think going forward, we're definitely gonna be more relaxed when it comes to stuff like that. Um, we've also discovered the most amazing woods right near our house. They're just beautiful and we never knew they were even there until all this happened and it was like our only option for exercise. So that's been really cool uh, and the kids just love going there. Um, I've also discovered that I like pink gin and the boys have really bonded together, especially my two older boys, Caleb and Fraser. They have become like best friends in this um, experience because they've kind of had to like turn to each other to play um, with each other. So that's actually been really nice to see. The next question is always the most asked question whenever I do a Q&A and that is, are we going to have more children? And the answer sadly is no. We think our family is complete. Um, so yeah, it's a no for that. And Jackson, he's gonna be four in September. Like, I can't even believe that. Um, so we're kind of getting out of that whole phase onto the next chapter. Um, what else? Oh, another question was, did you and Matt always know that we wanted children? So I always knew I wanted to be a mum from a very young age, but I never actually thought, yes, I'll get pregnant or yes, I'll have a baby until I met Matt. I very much knew that I wanted to have children with the right person. Um, so yeah, and I was lucky to meet Matt when I was 22 years old. We got married when I was 26 and um, I feel really lucky that I met the right person. Um, but yes, we always knew we wanted kids. We used to talk about it before we had them. He wanted two, I wanted four, so we had three, because marriage is all about compromise. The next question is, what have I been missing the most since I've been in quarantine? And the answer is definitely just people. I'm missing my friends so much. Like we're having catch-ups and texts and WhatsApp groups and everything, but it's just not the same as just seeing them for dinner or just hanging out. So definitely missing people people the most. Close second to that though is beauty treatments. I am falling apart of the seams people. My nails, I've been doing them myself. They're not too bad. Um, my lashes, they're nearly all um, out. I have lash extensions, they're nearly all gone. My roots, I think I'm on like week 12 now. Um, so yeah, I am missing the salon for sure as well. <laughs> the next question is, do I ever get afternoon naps? No, and I can't even imagine what that must be like. But I will say, since we've been self-isolating and just at home, although we're doing less, I feel like the boys are sleeping more. So I don't know if anyone else has experienced that, but the boys are waking up like 7, 7.30, which was unheard of before. Um, so that's a plus. The next question is, what is going to be your first family vacation after COVID-19? So I have already been looking at holidays and just doing some research, although I wouldn't book anything because we don't know what's gonna happen. But this year is a really big birthday for Matt. He's turning a big 4-0. So I really wanted to book something special for that, um, but we obviously can't book anything. His birthday is not until December, but again, we just don't know if anything's gonna be back to normal 
by then or when it's going to be back to normal but I'm looking at all different types of holidays if you have any suggestions I would love to know if you've been on any really special holidays as a family let me know in the comments <laughs> Another question about holidays was, did we cancel any because of the COVID-19? And we were due to go to Canada for two weeks in April for Easter. I was really hoping to see my family, my sister and my mum, but of course we can't fly. Um, and then we were actually due to be going on a cruise in May. And there were three stops in Italy, one stop in Spain, one stop in France. Um, so obviously that's not happening, but that's fine. Um, you know, we'd love to do that um, in the future, but yes, all cancelled, but at least we're safe. The next question is, is there anything that you look back on that you'd wish you'd done differently when the boys were babies? Um, and I don't think there's anything that really stands out. The only thing that literally pops into my head was going back to work when Fraser was 10 months old um, I went back to work four days a week and it was quite long hours and I did have to work some weekends so it was quite full on and it just tore me apart I struggled it's making me emotional even now yeah I struggled so much with leaving him but one positive thing is that it kind of like it created this channel it literally made me want to do something else or um you know and it really gave me the motivation like although this started as a hobby it really motivated me as soon as i thought that there could be something here i was like went in all guns blazing because i just wanted to be with him more the next question is what inspired me to be a youtuber and i think i just really enjoyed watching youtube myself as a user when i was pregnant with fraser and caleb i used to watch people on youtube and i used to just be really interested in what they could eat and hold down and any recommendations they had so i used to get a lot from it um and then when i had caleb i thought oh i wonder if now that i'm a mum of two if I could make any content that people would enjoy and then that's what I did I just made a video about what I was feeding Caleb at the time and it went really well so then I just have been hooked ever since <laughs> um, the next question is where do you find strength to be creative every day um, I think with my YouTube channel it is mostly me like just documenting my life so although it is a creative hobby sometimes I'm literally like we're doing the food shop today so I'll just show them what I bought in the food shop or I'm just gonna vlog our day or you know at the moment I'm cleaning this or so it is very much just my life saying that though I'm loving TikTok at the moment it's just such a fun app and I've been making lots of content over there and I think I'm just really enjoying it because my eldest is nine and he really loves it we are completely bonding over um TikTok and making little videos together and it's really cool I think that motivates me and having a schedule you know I need to upload three videos a week and I always want to make sure that I meet that schedule because it, my audience has grown to the point now where if I miss a video I will get messages from people asking if I'm okay and where my video was so I kind of feel like you know you guys are waiting for it so I always want to show up for you the next question is do you have any tips for getting my toddler to eat healthy food um, smoothies is a great one you can hide lots of veggies in smoothies also hidden veg in like spaghetti bolognese that has been blended is another good one um, also my boys just really like eating raw vegetables so you could try that with like hummus or dip or something um, but also I would say if your child is very young don't worry I got really stressed about like fussy eating when the boys were really little. I even took Fraser to the doctors, um, even though in hindsight, he was always my best eater. And the doctor said, what you should do is keep a diary of everything that they eat in a day. And when I actually wrote down everything that they had eaten that day, it was a lot when you add up all the snacks and all the little bits. And you have to remember as well, they have really tiny tummies. Um, so I would also say, don't be too hard on yourself because it gets so much easier as soon as they get older their taste buds change you can also use bribery you know you don't get pudding unless you finish your broccoli 
Um, so it is just a phase um, and they will be eating everything in no time. And now that the boys are older, I cannot believe how much food they eat. The next question is a really fun one. Someone has asked what the inspiration was behind our children's names. So my eldest son, he is Fraser Matthew Norris. Fraser is actually after Fraser Island in Australia. Before we even had children, we used to talk about what we would name them. And we jokingly said, could we name them after anywhere we've been? And then we were just going through different places we'd been. And then we said Fraser Island. And then both of us were like, Fraser's actually really nice. And that's how we named him. But we had that name way before he was even conceived. We knew our first son was gonna be Fraser. Um, and then Matthew is obviously after his dad, my husband, Matt. Um, so we gave Fraser his name. Um, and then Caleb, we just really liked the name. I kind of wanted to go for like Canadian, American names um, that are unique over here in the UK. And we both liked Caleb. The lead singer of Kings of Leon is named Caleb. Caleb, and that was our wedding song. So that was quite a nice link. And then Dean, um, his middle name is actually my maiden name. So I was Emily Dean before I was Emily Norris. So that was like another nice link and a nice way to get my family name in there. Um, Cause obviously I lost mine when I got married. And then when it came to our youngest son, who was named Jackson Leo Norris, we had almost run out of all the boys' names that we liked, but we really liked surname names. So I would say names like Cooper, Carter, Harrison, Hudson, like all of those kinds of names to Matt. And he would always say no. And then one day I said Jackson and he was like, yes, I really like that. So we agreed like that. But we had no idea what to do for the middle name. Um, but my eldest son, Fraser, he really wanted to name my baby bump Leo. And he just kept it up the whole pregnancy. He kept saying he wanted the baby to be called Leo. So in the end, we had Leo as the middle name. So it's quite sweet that his brother named his middle name. And I'm pretty sure it's after a Ninja Turtle, <laughs> um, but it suits him now. Someone has asked, what is my favorite Amazon product ever? And the first thing that springs to mind is my spray mop because I use it all the time and I just love it. <laughs> the next question is, how do you always look so put together as a mum? Tips, please, I love your content. Um, I would say having a YouTube channel and Instagram help because some days I feel like, you know, I will put on makeup just in case I have to take a photo later or I will kind of like make the effort in case I'm filming. Um, for instance, I showered today for you guys. Um, so I would have clean hair for this video. <laughs> um, but I, I guess I have always like taken pride in my appearance. I've always liked wearing nice clothes and I've always, you know, joked that every day is worth your best outfit. Um, so yeah, don't like, I have days when I don't wear makeup. I pretty much put it on for you guys, so don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> the next question is, do you have a system for screen time? So when we're not in quarantine and the kids are at school, it's so easy to limit the screen time because they only have it when they get home from school and it's just before dinner and then that's it. Obviously, now that we're stuck indoors and they want their iPads all the time, what I have found has been really helping is putting it on our schedule. We've got like a loose schedule for the boys um, homeschooling and stuff. And if we actually write when they will be available to have screen time, like half an hour at lunch, an hour after school, as long as they know when it's next coming, they seem to be okay with it. It's like, well, no, not right now, but in an hour, you can have it at lunchtime or you can have it after school. Um, it's tricky, isn't it? Because uh, with my eldest particularly, he will play games um, on the phone while he's playing them with his friends or while he's talking to his friends. So it's actually a really nice way for him to connect with people. So they've definitely been having more screen time than normal because of the situation. But I think that's the same for like every family. And to be honest, I think we're doing pretty well. So the next question is, do you miss Canada? And of course I do, but I think more than anything, I miss my family that are in Canada. I have a lot of love for the UK. I moved here when I was 14 years old, so more than half my life and the years that I remember. Um, and when I moved to England, I think life got really good for me. So I've always been really fond of here and I can't imagine moving away. Um, I also really love living in Essex. I know 
anyone who I say that to, especially people from Essex are like, what? But I think it's like a beautiful place to live. Um, and I just really love it. So yeah, I do miss Canada. The next question is, what is my favorite thing about being a mom of boys? And I think it is all the love and cuddles. Boys love their mums. Obviously they love Matt as well, but they are really cuddly. And yeah, I feel very like the queen of the house here. The next question is, do we ever have problems with the kids getting in with us at night? And yes, we do. Jackson's been sleeping in our bed for months now because we took the side off of his crib and he just kept coming in and neither Matt or I was going to tackle like making him stay in his room because we thought the house move was happening and uh, we didn't have a proper big boy bed for him yet or anything. So we've just gone with it and it's actually quite nice. Got my little like hot water bottle, which is Jackson next to me. Um, the big boys, Caleb and Fraser tend to like go into each other now, which is really nice. Um, but one of the reasons we decided to get Caleb a double bed because it's just like another place for us to sleep when it is musical beds at night. The next question is what camera am I using? And I'm currently filming on a Canon M50. I quite like it. Um, I've also had loads of questions about the house move and I've also had the question, are we selling this house that we're currently living in? But at the moment, we just don't know what is happening. We have no idea what is gonna to happen to the property market. Uh, we are still hoping to buy the house that we were dreaming of, um, but as the weeks, you know, at first we thought, oh, it might be like a three week delay, oh, it might be a month, and now it just feels like, is it actually gonna ever happen? But this whole experience has taught us as well that we do really love this house and we like it's got a really good amount of space for us. We've just been pretty much hanging out in the living area um, and actually we just feel really happy that we have a roof over our head at the moment and that we are safe and that we've got savings and we can um, be okay here. So it's just a big I don't know at the moment. The next question is, what is your proudest mum moment? Um, and the first thing that springs to mind is whenever we have parents evening, um, or if anyone says something nice about our boys, it just really gets me because I feel like, oh, obviously we're totally biased and we think they're the greatest thing in the world. But then when someone else tells you that they're really polite or they're good or they're good at something, or if I see Fraser play a football match and he plays really well, I'm just like, oh, so proud. So probably be um, then, or even if, if like the boys go to someone's house and then when you pick them up, they're like, they've been so good, so well behaved. You're like, oh, I'm so proud. Um, so yeah, probably when other people say nice things about them. Uh, the next question is, what is your favorite thing to do without the kids um, during lockdown? Is there such a thing <laughs> as being without the kids? Um, probably just Netflix and chill. Um, once the boys go to bed at night, Matt and I have been watching Money Heist. We're really enjoying that. And we've also been watching the second series of Afterlife, which is such a good one as well. So yeah, it's probably just doing that and relaxing. The next person has said, I've just started a YouTube channel. Have you got any tips for me? So I'll link below a video that I made all about how to start on YouTube. Um, there's some good tips in that, but I would say just be yourself, be consistent. If you can set a schedule where you say, I'm gonna upload every Monday or I'm gonna upload every Sunday, whatever it is, it just makes you accountable and makes you stick to it. But I would say the hardest thing is just getting going and don't overthink it, just make content because the more you make, the more you learn and you just never know what video is going to do well. I've put out videos before where I think, oh, I don't know if this is a bit boring and it will literally get millions of views. The next question is how is Matt doing? So that's my husband. Um, thanks for asking, he's fine. Uh, I think he's treating this time as like paternity leave because he's always been self-employed. He never took a paternity leave with any of the children. I remember with Fraser, he was our first. He was born um, in December and that is literally like his busiest month at work. Um, so the day after we had Fraser, pretty much Matt went back to work and he was busy and my mum would always come over to help me in like the early days. So he's just trying to enjoy it and think about it in that way. He's been playing loads of football with the kids. He's been such a big help around the home and I've just actually just loved 
having him around. Someone asked what my age is and that's a question I get all the time. It's also like the second most googled thing of my name. It's like Emily Nora's age. So I'm 37. I started my channel when I was 31 um, and I remember even then thinking oh I'm too old for YouTube but people don't seem to mind so that's good. <laughs> Um, another question is, have you ever visited Australia? So yes, we went there for six weeks um, before we had children and we did just the East Coast and we loved it, we really did. The next question is, someone wrote, you are so dedicated, do you ever have days when you just don't feel like filming? And of course I do, um, but I would say I really do love making videos and I love my channel and I love my community, so I think that really keeps me going. Um, I get such nice emails from people and messages that it's really helped or, you know, people with postnatal depression and it's made them carry on and like really heart-wrenching stuff. So that definitely keeps me going, but I do love it. I have a passion for it. And I think the years that I'm in right now are ones that I will always look back on and think that was the best job I've ever had. So yeah, I really love it and I will carry on as long as I possibly can. <laughs> Someone put mum guilt, being loving but tough, enforcing the rules but seeing their disappointed faces. How do you cope with disciplining the boys? So I would never show disciplining on my channel. That's obviously not fair to the boys and I just would never pick up a camera and film when I was doing it. But of course I have to discipline the boys. Um, but it's not like a natural thing for me. I'm quite a soft person and I don't like it. But I forced myself to do it because my mum said, if you don't get it right at this young age, it will show up when they're teenagers. So whenever I'm disciplining the boys, I think I'm doing this for them in the future and I'm doing this for my future self because if you are a massive pushover when they're young or when they're older, they're just gonna think mum's a massive pushover and they're just not gonna come in when you tell them to come in and stuff like that. So I keep that in my head that I'm just trying to get it right now. Um, you know, you're trying to be nice to them by teaching them right from wrong um, and the way to act. It's actually so that they're a nice adult and a nice person. So just keep that in your head. Someone said, have you ever considered being a teacher or a teacher assistant? You would be a great teacher. So thank you very much. I have never ever thought of that. But if I was a teacher, I think I would definitely want to teach the younger years. I'd want to teach like kindergarten, five-year-olds. I definitely feel like I would want to teach the little ones. Someone else has asked, have you got any tips on getting your baby to self settle. So I have actually made a whole video on this. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. We did the Ferber method with Fraser because he used to wake up every hour and we just couldn't survive anymore. So we did that for him. Um, so yeah, I'll link it. Someone else has asked, do you ever find it difficult living in another country to your mum and family? I'm in the same position. Um, so I think I found it really difficult, especially when I had my first child and I was like on my own over here and I used to go to play groups and I'd be like talking to other mums and they'd be like, oh, I'm just gonna nip to my mums after this for 10 minutes, have a cup of tea or like, or they would like moan about their mum and I used to think, oh, you just don't know how lucky you are. Um, Cause obviously we talk all the time but it's like not the same as like just popping around or getting them to babysit. So I do always like miss things like that. Um, but I think now that we're like three kids in, we've come very used to just being completely like self-reliant. Um, Matt's mum is great. She really helps us, especially when it comes to like babysitting. She does like all of that. Um, but yeah, I do really miss them. This is quite a cute question. Someone has asked, what would the boys like to be when they're older? So Fraser wants to be a professional footballer for Tottenham Hotspurs. That's his dream. Um, Caleb would like to be a gymnast um, who can do flips. So that is basically their two biggest hobbies. Caleb's really bendy. You'll see in all my videos, he's always doing cartwheels and stuff. Um, whereas Fraser's is just really into football. Jackson, I have no idea, but he does have a fascination with um, like the human body. We've got like a human body book for kids and he's always talking about the skeleton, the muscles, like the body, all about it. So. He might be a doctor or something, who knows? 
The next question is what is my fondest memory of being a child? And the first thing that springs to mind is living with my grandma and grandpa. There was a period of time where me, my mom and my sister lived with my grandparents and I loved it. Like I'm sure it was probably stressful for my mom, <laughs> um, but I just loved having so many people around and my grandma and grandpa used to like spoil me and my sister and like used to cook the most amazing food and they lived in the most amazing area. If you're from Toronto, they like we lived in Rosedale. The next question is what is your favorite secret snack? And it is probably, I get a um, caramel rice cake. I put almond butter on it and then honey. And yeah, it's a bit weird, but I really like it. <laughs> the next question is what is the worst thing about childbirth? And I think it's probably being in so much pain that you forget to breathe because then when you forget to breathe, it hurts even more. So I did hypnobirthing and I cannot recommend it enough to you guys. It just relaxes you and reminds you to breathe and it just helped me so much. But I would say, although childbirth is really painful, I did it three times, I would do it again tomorrow. I actually quite enjoyed it um, in a weird way. It just makes you feel like, superwoman after words and it's there's no experience like it so if you're worried don't worry the next question is how long did it take me to get 100 subscribers on youtube and it took a good six months it's very slow going in the beginning um, and it's weird the more you grow the more momentum you get the more youtube's gonna show you to other people and the algorithm is gonna favor you so you do really have to stick with it i didn't feel like i got much of a following until two years in um but then once i hit twenty thousand, then soon after i hit a hundred thousand and it just kind of built that way so i know it can be really disheartening to begin with but if you stick with it people will find you the next question is would we ever get a dog and this is something the boys would love and they ask all the time but my husband matt is really allergic to animals cats and dogs their skin and their hair um, and even some hypoallergenic dogs he still gets the red eyes and everything so it is something we would love to look into in the future but i think matt would have to have a whole host of allergy tests um, and just see if it was even possible caleb keeps saying about hamster for his birthday as well so they would love some kind of pet maybe we'll have to get a reptile or something i don't know someone asked would i ever film a day where everything goes completely wrong and i have done that in the past a perfect example is two christmases ago um i always vlog on christmas day so that's why i was vlogging and first thing in the morning jackson fell over and cut his eye and we needed to go to a e to get it glued um but I kept vlogging that day because I vlog every Christmas and I was just like, I'm going to keep vlogging. Um, but it just shows how bad the day went um, and how wrong it all went. Um, so yeah, I have done that in the past, but I don't think when you're having a really bad day, you think, oh, I know, I'll pick up a camera. But I try to show as much real life as I possibly can. Someone has asked what my favorite Instagram accounts are to follow, and I have so many that I love, but at the moment, I'm really loving following good news accounts because the media has been so much like, this is the death toll, um, isn't this so awful? I've been really enjoying following people like Tanks Good News, and the happy project because they only focus on the good news um, and it's just really nice. Someone has asked how I balance my work life and my home life and it's really tricky because my job is literally like documenting my life. I can always be doing stuff and I can always be on. So if I sit down on the couch at night, I could always be answering um, people on Instagram. I could always be responding to comments. I could always be thinking about video ideas. So I don't actually think I have a good balance. I think I'm always thinking about work, but because it is like a passion for me and I do really love it, I don't mind. Like I would always want to be doing stuff. And the last question that I'm gonna answer today is what is my favorite perfume? And I have a lot, but this has to be my number one. It is one that I just keep repurchasing over and over again. It is the Jo Malone Dark Amber and Ginger Lily. It's one of their intense colognes. And the reason I love it so much is because I bought it in the airport as we were going on our honeymoon to Bali. So the scent of it just reminds me of how amazing that holiday was. And it is a really beautiful smell. And I have repurchased it nonstop 
for the past 10 years. I just keep buying it over and over again and it lasts a really long time. So that has to be my number one. But I think I'm gonna leave it there. There are so many questions that I haven't had a chance to answer, but I'm just really aware of how long this video must be now. Um, but if you like this, I'll do a part two, so give it a big like. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are all staying safe and well. Um, sending you lots of love.